The Uncomplication channel is for education and entertainment purposes only. In no way is this financial advice, nor am I a financial advisor. Please trade at your own risk. Enjoy. Hello, everyone, and happy Friday. I realize it has been a while since I have made a Strictly Crypto video for YouTube, although I have been making a lot of videos and calls and classrooms and things in the crypto garden. So I still encourage that if you like me and you like crypto, take a look at the crypto garden community. I think it's pretty unique in the space and that's where most of my crypto focus is going. But it's been a while, so I want to make good with this YouTube audience and offer a little market look in because we are in some really interesting territory. There's a lot happening. And so I'm gonna dig in. I'm gonna look at a couple of the hot uh, projects of the moment. And then I'm gonna talk about some of the things that have come up in our community, things that have been in my mind in the last couple of weeks. And so let's dig in. So here we are looking at the total crypto market cap. And we can see all the work that we have done here really since that big crash in May. Uh, we've been uh, cruising here now for uh, 107 days since that May 19th, uh, really bringing ourselves out of this hole and back up to where we are in some really interesting levels now, um, retesting some of these major Fibonacci resistance levels. And it's a, it's a good looking picture. Uh, we didn't know throughout this whole period of time whether we were going to be breaking down or breaking up. Uh, we still don't know in the short term the direction of things, but as far as a picture, this is a really a really nice uh, thing to see. We've had this very healthy, uh, again, this is all the coins, all the projects in crypto, but a very characteristic accumulation pattern. And we've been putting in just week after week of these moves up, driven by projects like Bitcoin and Cardano and Solana and a handful of others. So let's take a look at our good friend Bitcoin. Bitcoin uh, is like the sun. All the other projects orbit around Bitcoin. And uh, here is the Wyckoff distribution uh, schematic that we've been following over the last several months. We've got our distribution that of course ended up in the big uh, markdown phase. We spent most of June and July and August um, kind of putting in this very characteristic accumulation pattern with the potential spring out of that accumulation in late July. And we've been tracking fairly well with the schematic. It is interesting that uh, just like we did here in the distribution, the actual schematic called for it to really break after this uh, first LPSY. And instead we kind of put in this interesting little rounded curve that enabled Ethereum to put in some all-time highs and make its moves before we finally crashed. And so again, we've got this accumulation zone and we got up to this SOS, whereas the schematic uh, shows price just blasting off from there. We've also kind of rounded out. We've stayed just below the 0.618. I haven't really got back to find support on this critical level. And so personally, I'm still very much of the mind set that short term we don't have a lot of confidence yet uh, because this is a very strong level of resistance we could kind of come back down and test some of these lower levels uh, as we make our way back up which is the hope uh, if on the other hand over the weekend and over the next couple weeks we really get back into this uh, fibonacci golden pocket and we start testing these levels and finding support if we can find Bitcoin sitting up on top of this 0.786 uh, heading into the end of the year, I'll be a lot more um, likely to be feeling that the, the narrative of a $100,000 Bitcoin or another big leg, a second market cycle uh, top is in play. But just keep in mind, we are still hanging out uh, below these resistance levels. These are some of the strongest ones we are likely to encounter on our move back up towards all-time highs. So I'm paying attention to this for in the short term to see whether we get rejected and go back down or if we can start bouncing around in here, finding support up on top and giving us a good setup for a, a move to the upside. 
Let's take a look at Cardano. It's another project that has really... Actually, let's take a look at Ethereum. We'll just go down the list here. So let's take a look at um, Ethereum, USD. I was explaining something on here earlier, so I got all kinds of chicken scratch. But Ethereum, unlike Bitcoin, has already done what we are hoping Bitcoin does. We had a very similar accumulation pattern. Uh, we had our spring event here in almost the same day as Bitcoin. The, the two were about a day apart. I think Bitcoin moved on the 20th and um, Ethereum moved on the 21st, you can see here. Uh, put in some really solid um, days here. And we, as Ethereum, have again got back to this very strong level of resistance in the 0.618, have been kind of bouncing and testing that, but we broke through. And so in the last um, week, really, we saw Ethereum make this move, um, breaking resistance, and now we are testing support on top. Uh, you can see it's just, it's, it's always so crazy to me how much these uh, Fibonacci levels uh, really are respected. You can see the wicks just going right to them before they come back down. We have another uh, area of support here and so we've been kind of bouncing around this uh, 0.618 and then we had a very powerful move blasting right through and now we are on the daily time frame finding support above the 0.786 so another really nice setup for one of our larger uh, satellites in the crypto uh, galaxy here so a lot depends on Bitcoin. If Bitcoin um, doesn't break through its resistance and we actually go back down, it could drag Ethereum and the other projects back down into this zone. But what you'll notice here, and as you look at these things, they all tend to follow similar patterns. The time scale just might be a bit different. So Bitcoin is kind of lagging. We have Ethereum is a little bit ahead, actually getting through some of these resistance levels, uh, getting dangerously close to peaking back at those all time highs. Uh, you know, four thousand dollar uh, Ethereum is something that I think we saw at least a wick of today, and so we're we're getting back into that really exciting place for Ethereum. Let's take a look really quickly at ADA. So we'll take a look at the ADA USD chart. I have a lot more on this chart because we had an entire uh, deep dive into ADA in the Crypto Garden in a uh, couple or last week, and then this week we had a. We interviewed the chairman of MELD and one of the co-founders of MELD, a project in the Cardano space. So a lot of looking and talking about uh, Cardano. I'll just go ahead and show you what I got here on this chart. So this is really looking at Cardano since um, here's the, the crash in COVID all the way back in March of 2020. And I've been keeping track of our Elliott impulse waves and it is sure looking like we are on our fifth and final impulse wave with Cardano um, with targets around $10, um, give or take. But again, here we have another really great example of these Fibonacci levels being very well respected. You can see this one here, uh, this bigger one that goes all the way back. This is from the previous all-time high in 2017. And we spent most of March, uh, February, March, and April um, kind of finding support. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Finding support on top of that very a strong level of first it was resistance then it became support we came up we put in the all-time high for the time in May before Cardano uh, came back down uh, found support on those same levels and Cardano really unlike a lot of other uh, altcoins it, it found some really nice support and it was um, even in the time that things were crashing Cardano was still set up very nicely here and so this, uh, let me just delete this for simplicity. This is the same scale of the fibs that we've been looking at on the other uh, projects. And so Cardano is even ahead of Ethereum in that we had our um, peak in May, came back down, accumulation, spring, back up, testing these fib levels. Uh, we actually went all the way up to the top, all the way back down to the bottom, if you can see that, up to the 7 point, uh, 0.786, down to the 0.618, found support, and now we are making a move away from these zones, actually finding support on the previous all-time high and putting in new all-time highs uh, almost daily here 
in the last uh, couple days. So exciting for Cardano. You can see on the weekly chart though, we are kind of getting into a overbought phase. You can see on the RSI down here, uh, it's pretty hot on the weekly. So we still might have some gains here on the daily. We actually look like we might be kind of crawling along the bottom of undersold or oversold on the daily, but on a weekly time frame, which is a lot uh, stronger in terms of indications of the uh, bigger moves that Cardano is likely to make, uh, we could see another. You know, uh, I would expect that we might come up. We might even you know test some of these levels, come back down, find support. But Cardano is, is definitely cruising, um, putting in some, some impressive gains for those of us who have been hodling like crazy throughout all of the circus of this year. The other project I wanna look in, and I'm not trying to exclude anything, but these are just the ones that are sort of uh, being talked about right now quite a bit. Uh, Solana has really broken away in the last couple days. Where is my Solana? Here we go. And yeah, you can see here that <clears throat> this is a weekly chart. Let's go back to the daily. I feel like we've been looking at most of our charts on the daily. But here is our May crash. And if we do the same trusty um, fib retracements, once again, we have a, an, a situation where we came back up we kind of uh, found some resistance, blasted through, and now you can see that as far as that last um, move, this last accumulation event that we had, Solana is now getting pretty extended in its uh, Fibonacci extensions here. So typically when we see a, um, a stock or a coin um, put in this much movement, from the previous peak and the previous accumulation. Uh, sometimes we blast pretty far out of these, like we can come uh, a bit out, but that also means that we're in a, a situation that is really overbought, really a lot of people just FOMOing in, um, buying prices in kind of a dangerous area. And what has to happen anytime that happens is there's going to be selling, you know, anyone who bought here is now looking at uh, or was you know hodling previously, uh, anyone who is holding Solana is looking at, wow, this is a 500% uh, gain in about 40 days. So we're going to see some selling, we're going to see this uh, start to correct down, and you wanna see that, that's a good thing because it allows us to, I always think of it like loading a spring. If this goes up, and we have a, a sell and a correction and we come back down and maybe we even test some of these uh, lower resistance levels and we start to put in kind of a pattern like this before we make another move up. Uh, it's like loading a spring. We can start looking at um, new levels of support and resistance and we can actually build a cause to go up a little bit higher. So uh, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. I'm just some random dude on the internet. So make your decisions wisely. But um, yeah, if you're if you're looking at the gains in Solana and any of these projects, really, I mean, this is the way that I tend to look at um, the moves in this market. You can see that they're all on different um, legs of this same journey. We've got Bitcoin has kind of been chilling down here. We've got Ethereum has just sort of busted through and is hanging out right here. We've got Cardano is somewhere up in here. And we've got Solana is even farther up in the extension. So you can do with that information what you will. Okay, um, the other thing that has been on my mind quite a bit is about a week ago, someone in the garden posted a, um, a document that was from another group that was talking about Tether. And it was kind of a, an expose digging into Tether. And if you are in crypto, you've heard some form of Tether FUD. You've heard a lot of the rumors for years and years that uh, there are some really questionable things about Tether. And I just wanna share with you what this uh, particular um, uh, rabbit hole was talking about and some of the concerns that I have quite frankly with this uh, issue of tether 
And um, yeah, so let's talk about it. Let's go over here to the Bitcoin chart real quick. And let's take a look at, let's just turn off all of our drawings for the time being. Actually, you know what, let's come over to the BLX so I have a little bit cleaner of a canvas. So if we look at Bitcoin, and we can even be doing this with the total crypto market cap. Actually, that's a better place to go. So check this out. So here is our total crypto market cap. We're at about uh, $2.3 trillion worth of um, uh, the, the market cap. The value in crypto is getting close to $2.3 trillion. And the thing that is really concerning to me about Tether is that if you go on most exchanges, it is one of the primary liquidity pairs with crypto. So you can exchange from USDT to just about any other asset. And a lot of people, when they are buying and selling Bitcoin, if they're going to take a profit or they're going to move into fiat, a lot of people will move into a stable coin. So the uh, USDT is really thought of as a US dollar. If you're on an exchange, you're taking profits from your Solana, you move that into USDT, mentally you've got the value of USDT is the same as the value in US dollars. Now the issue is if everyone decided that they actually wanted to move that USDT back to their bank, they wanted to take that in actual uh, USD, and there was a run on Tether to cash out and, and actually make it USD, the supply of Tether is being created in a way, or the hypothesis is that it's being created in a way that is leveraging debt assets to represent a full value of uh, USD on the exchange. So if I'm Tether, which is an organization, they can do whatever they want, and there's no regulation in this space, so everything they're doing is technically legal, but they can go over to another country. Uh, this, this was saying that they go over to China, and they can buy Chinese debt for a discount. So this happens all the time. You can go and you can buy debt, uh, and you can pay, let's just say that this is, uh, let's just call it $100 worth of uh, debt and Tether can go in and let's just say they buy it for uh, $20, $25. So they actually go and spend $25 to buy $100 worth of Chinese debt and then because they're allowed to do this, they can represent that full $100 as being backed, that USDT is backed by $100 of USD in the form of debt, and they can put $100 into crypto. They can give those new tokens that they created based on that debt or based on that uh, supposed value to anyone that they want. And then that can be taken on an exchange and you can go buy $100 worth of Bitcoin. So when you look at the overall uh, crypto market cap, and you realize that $2.8 trillion or $2.28 trillion is being um, buoyed by some percentage of this stable coin. And it doesn't even really matter how much it is. Maybe it's only 5%, maybe it's 20%, maybe it's 50%. I don't know the, the answer to this. But if this is, um, you know, this tether that is not actually backed up by, uh, assets that can be easily exchanged you know if if someone it really came down to it and they needed that hundred dollars to go put into USD they would have to go collect on this debt for the full amount to get the amount of value that's now locked up in Bitcoin in the market so I think this is why regulators are really focusing on stable coins as a big issue because they can say it's pegged against the US dollar. People can treat it like a US dollar. I can go take out my Bitcoin holdings in Tether and feel like I've got USD. But in a sense, we've got this market that is, um, you know, we see the market cap, but it's like part of it was built with um, popsicle sticks and bubble gum. And we don't actually have a foundation uh, to support 
this this level of um, the the market cap, so that if we were to make a a rush on Tether and all of the debt portion was uh, not actually there to collect, we're going to have a settling of this overall structure and it could just get messy. So uh, I'm not putting this out there as a, this is what's happening. Uh, this has kind of set me down some rabbit holes. I've been doing some more digging and investigation, but um, this is just one of those things that as we are recognizing the market that we're in, that it is early stage, that there are um, really no rules to the game right now. Uh, things like this and these loopholes and these exploits that um, are probably right now in the scaffolding of the market, it is my feeling that we as investors and crypto enthusiasts just need to be careful. We just need to remember that uh, just like neighborhoods here in Colorado, you can go buy a beautiful house and not know that there's an old coal mine that's below the surface that could cave in or catch fire. We're not standing on as solid ground as we sometimes want to believe. And I just offer that to you as food for thought. Um, my crazy drawing here with all these <laughs> lines on it, just going to show that uh, the overall market might actually have some structural weakness. And as we get into more rounds of regulation and more scrutiny about how these things actually operate, I would expect that this a really rigid price story that we've been following uh, could see some settling as those pieces are uh, I don't I don't think it would collapse entirely but I think there would be some settling and some uh, short-term panic but uh, so that is one big thing that's been on my mind another big thing uh, just really interested right now in NFTs uh, I bought my first NFT this week and I now understand that experience and I'm still disgusted quite frankly, with the excess and the, the use of money in this speculative way that doesn't actually put any real value into the world. But, but, big but, these projects are evolving. The things that they're doing are so creative. And we in the Crypto Garden have gotten together. We're starting to talk about how we could maybe start using some of these tools to build something that furthers our mission. Um, and we're gonna be releasing those videos. We're, we're recording the whole process of um, the, the idea that we wanna create all the way through the execution. We're documenting all of that. We'll start putting some of that onto this channel as well. It's really fun to kind of see us talk about uh, the philosophy of NFTs and the use cases and the good, the bad, the ugly, and kind of honing in on this version that I think we wanna try um, in the crypto garden. And then I guess the last thing I'll say is um, because I've been spending so much time in the crypto garden with my crypto life, I have a lot of content that's been created there. Uh, we just did an interview with the, I think I said this earlier, with the chairperson, uh, co-founder of Meld, uh, talking about the Cardano um, ecosystem and DeFi. And I'm going to start leaking some of that content onto this channel uh, just to satiate that itch that you might have for crypto flavored content. While at the same time, like I, I kind of set the intention earlier, Uncomplication to me is kind of this place that I want to keep uh, pristine, keep it a place that can be a springboard for exploration into other topics. I've reached out to a, um, a leading designer of very, very, very futuristic computer systems who's an expert on machine learning, and that's going to be a great interview that should be coming up later this fall. Um, yeah, so I'm just pointing that lens of inquiry into these bigger arenas and I'll be bringing more of that to this Uncomplication channel. And if you didn't like my yoga class with one of the best teachers on the planet, you don't have to thumbs down it. You can just go back to staring at your charts or, you know, feeling that lower back pain and your body's like, dude, get up, go, go do this. And you're like, no. So I'm going to keep putting that stuff on this channel and you can love it or hate it or leave it. Doesn't really matter to me. I just enjoy being here. I like sharing ideas. And I love um, growing this community of like-minded people. So that's all I have for today. I know it was kind of long, but it's been a while. So thanks for tuning in. And until next time, cheers.